We are asked to simplify the given radical expressions. A radical expression is not considered simplified if there is a fraction under the radical or if there is a radical in the denominator. For our first example, we have the square root of 75 sixteenths. We should always check to see if the fraction will first simplify. In this case, though, the only common factor between 75 and 16 is 1, and therefore the fraction does not simplify. For the next step, we apply the radical property shown below, which states the x root of a over b equals the x root of a divided by the x root of b as long as b doesn't equal 0, which means the square root of 75 sixteenths equals the square root of 75 divided by the square root of 16. And now we simplify the numerator and denominator separately. Because we have square roots, we are looking for perfect square factors of the radicands. 75 is equal to 3 times 5 times 5. This shows 75 contains the perfect square factor of 5 times 5, or 25. Looking at the denominator, 16 is a perfect square. 16 is equal to 4 times 4. Let's write the square root of 16 as the square root of 4 times 4. Again, because 16 equals 4 times 4, this shows 16 is a perfect square. Before we simplify, though, let's write this one more time using exponents. Let's write the numerator as the square root of 3 times 5 squared. Let's write the denominator as the square root of 4 squared. Well, the square root of 5 squared simplifies perfectly to one factor of 5, and the square root of 4 squared simplifies perfectly to one factor of 4, which means the expression simplifies to 5 square root 3 divided by 4. Notice in this form, there is no longer a fraction under the square root, and there's also no square root in the denominator. The expression is now considered simplified. Next we have the cube root of 324 fourths. For the first step, let's see if this fraction will simplify. The greatest common factor between 324 and 4 is 4, so to simplify, we will divide the numerator and denominator by 4. This gives us the cube root of 324 divided by 4 is equal to 81, and of course 4 divided by 4 is equal to 1, which means this simplifies to the cube root of 81. To simplify the cube root of 81, we look for perfect cube factors of 81. The prime factorization of 81 is 4 factors of 3. Notice here we have a group of 3 equal factors of 3. Using exponents, we can write this as the cube root of 3 cubed times 3. And the cube root of 3 cubed simplifies perfectly to 1 factor of 3. The simplified radical expression is 3 times the cube root of 3. Notice the radical expression no longer contains a fraction under the radical or a radical in the denominator. I hope you found this helpful. We are asked to simplify the given radical expressions. A radical expression is not considered simplified if there is a fraction under the radical or if there is a radical in the denominator. For the first example, we have the square root of 100x divided by 5x. The first step should always be to see if the fraction under the radical will simplify. 100x divided by 5x simplifies very nicely because 5x is a factor of 100x. To show this, let's write 100x as 20 times 5x. Notice in this form, we can see that 5x divided by 5x will simplify to 1, and therefore the radical simplifies to the square root of 20. But now we need to simplify the square root of 20 by identifying any perfect square factors of 20. To do this, let's look at the prime factorization of 20, which is 2 times 2 times 5. So the square root of 20 is equal to the square root of 2 times 2 times 5. Notice here we have two factors of 2, which shows 20 
contains a perfect square factor of 2 squared, or 4. Before simplifying, let's write 2 times 2 as 2 squared. This is equal to the square root of 2 squared times 5. And the square root of 2 squared simplifies perfectly to 1 factor of 2. The simplified expression is 2 square root 5. Next, we have the cube root of 64x squared y to the fifth divided by the cube root of 4y squared. Now this radical expression looks rather messy, so what we'll do in this case is use the radical property shown below in the opposite direction. Notice the property indicates the x root of a divided by the x root of b is equal to the x root of the fraction a over b which means the quotient of these two cube roots is equal to the cube root of the fraction 64x squared y to the fifth divided by 4y squared. In this form, we will now simplify the fraction and then simplify the resulting cube root. So we have the cube root of 64 divided by 4 is equal to 16. Then we have x squared. Then we have y to the fifth divided by y to the second. Remember, when dividing and the bases are the same, we subtract the exponents. y to the fifth divided by y to the second is equal to y raised to the power of 5 minus 2, which equals y cubed. So this simplifies to the cube root of 16x squared y to the third. Now to continue simplifying, because we have a cube root, we look for perfect cube factors of the radicand. Well, the prime factorization of 16 is 4 factors of 2. So we have 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. Notice how here we have 3 equal factors of 2. Then we have x squared, which does not contain any perfect square factors. But let's go ahead and write x squared as x times x. Then we have y to the third, which is equal to y times y times y. Notice here we have three equal factors of y. Let's write this one more time using exponents before we simplify. Let's write this as the cube root of 2 cubed times 2 times the x squared, which will not simplify, times y cubed. And again, here we have three equal factors of 2 and three equal factors of y. The cube root of 2 cubed is equal to one factor of 2. The cube root of y cubed is equal to one factor of y. And we still have the cube root of 2x squared. This is the simplified radical expression. And because the index is odd, there's no need for an absolute value. I hope you found this helpful.